Hello and welcome to this 16 minute uh, video on orthographic sketching using cylinders and more. We're going to look at this little toy train. That's close to a finished uh, set of sketches but this is the starting point. This is the physical sketches that started this whole work up. It gave you an idea. Now I've had to separate a couple of the views from the freehand sketch but there's initial 2D views, plan elevation, end elevation and a 3D sketch to give you the general idea of the particular form. Now what we're going to go through is how you'd build up a drawing like this and a little bit of a cheat here is I'm going to keep that freehand sketch tucked away in the background so you can see how I'd actually build up a drawing like this if I was using blank paper. So the idea would be to start off with the base. I'm going to start off with a couple of vertical and horizontal lines for the base part, for the cab part and for the cylinder. Now that first cylinder is, is, is lying on its side. I'm also putting centre lines. Now these are fairly new to us today. We'll do a little bit more detail them as you see this develop. But at the moment you'll see they're necessary to help me line things up for the chimney, for that little dome thing which is called the condenser, um, and for holes. That's, that's more or less the elevation sorted out. Just try to freehand some circles in and where the right hand view, the end elevation, would line up relative to the elevation as indeed were the plan. So these light lines getting sketched off the side are to give me the relevant lengths and heights. Circle for the cylinder, I think you can see from the very light 3D view what the cylinder looks like. The chimney sticking at the top, trying to be as close as possible to the same widths and the heights being projected over. Um, and the wheels, well they're just going to appear as rectangles but they're going to have to be the right diameter and the right height, in other words touching the ground in the right place. There'll be a slight gap between the body of the, the, the small toy and the, the wheels just to allow them to, to move freely. The top view isn't quite lined up, so a little bit tidying up on the, the sketch from behind. We take some horizontal lines. The centre lines, again, more, dem more information on them coming up. The cab, the back of the, the chassis, the bottom part, and then the wheels. And the wheels are going to have to line up. Now hopefully that background sketch will tend to disappear and I'll use the digital sketch, which is slightly more accurate. Um, to, to build up the rest of this drawing and it is going to be building up so we're starting off with light construction lines and building up so there's, there's a starting point if you like now there are windows on that cab uh, little circular things but for circles the software I'm using this now just tightens up my circles a little bit um, and there's a rectangle for the base now I'm not going to see everything there those wheels will cover I think you've worked that out the, uh, the, the things behind it but we're just drawing the rectangles at the moment that will make up those parts remember some of these rectangles are cylinders, some of the circles are holes, some of the circles are cylinders. Now to get a clear understanding of that we really need the three views. Okay, so basically what we're doing is lining in, inking in or firming in the sketch just to tidy it up a little bit. There's the cylinder from the front, the side of the cab and the chassis. These have been projected across from the elevation, the height of the cab, the widths of the chimney and the sloping parts on that chimney there. Don't know if there's going to be a hole in that one. There's certainly nothing visible at the moment. Those two windows, which we cannot see in the plan and we cannot see in the elevation. So we maybe have to introduce some new lines that will help us understand more than we're just seeing. The, the, big, the drawing right at the beginning of this was just the outside. What we're going to have to add to this are some, I was going to say, magical, or, uh, imaginary lines, conventions we call them, that tell us detail that we can't see. For example, those first lines were used to line up the circles I'm drawing at the top of the snow. We'll use centre lines. Now centre lines have a specific um, shape or pattern um, and I've used a colour in this case just so you can I, I see you will see them but in reality it's a, it's a black thing. There, there's outside drawing. Now let's get rid of some of those little circles and some of the things I won't see but I know they're there but I can't see them. So a little bit of the circles on the end elevation, little bits of the chimney uh, and I'll name these views up. So, so that's basically what I'd see, looking at the side, or the front, or the top. The, the side I'm going to call the elevation, that's our main view, the toy train's moving to the right. Uh, and then we've got the end elevation, which is the front of the train, and the plan, which is the, the view up above. From those three views, the only one that tells us that it's a cylinder is really that end elevation. The cylinder being the, the, the main body, the tank, uh, um, if you like, of the, and the boiler of, of the engine, the cylindrical part of the front. Um, if we have orthographic views, that tells us something, but it doesn't really tell us everything. For example, what's that circle in the cab, and what were those two little circles on the front of the cab? And did, did the wheels go? Why are the heels the wheels held on? So this orthographic sketch has got um, 
some information, but I think I'm going to get a hint here this now. Um, we think we might have we might have left some detail out. Um, can you think of things that are missing? Looking at the view this now, I know it makes sense because you saw the early sketch and you saw the 3D one, but somebody coming to this cold would maybe have some questions to ask. So things we've missed out, number one, will be the centre lines. Those lines that told us where exactly the centre is, say for drilling a hole, or if the hole goes right the way through, or if there's a, something spinning around the centre, like the axle and the wheels. So um, it's getting a little bit slow to type in thing this here. So what about those centre lines? Do you reckon you work out where a few might be? There certainly were some in the original rough sketch and in the digital sketch, but with this one, there we go, the front of that, that boiler, the cylinder, that's the, the cylinder going, the crosshairs at the end, but there's also a centre line running through the middle of that cylinder and the middle of the chimney. Come to think of it, the same in the top view, there'll be a cylinder centre line coming through there. That's all the one part. And the chimney. How about the wheels? Well, the wheels would have those crosshairs like the sights on a gun through the centre, uh, say for drilling the holes, that's how we line it up uh, for the wheels in that view, but what about the wheels in the views next door? Or the hole in the cab? There's definitely a centre for that. Now these don't exist, you won't see them. There are centre lines going through the wheels, how they join up across the way I'm not too sure, but in the plan view you can see those centre lines going through the bits of the wheels that we can currently see. Um, Looking around, are there any other bits? I've maybe missed a couple, maybe your eyes are a bit sharper than mine. The condenser, that dome thing, a dome rather than a cylinder, has a, has a centre to it. And the chimney is not really a cylinder, but it's something that if, if you spin it round, it'd be the same shape all the way around. So, so we're going to call that a solid of revolution. A cylinder is just a flat-sided solid of revolution. Um, yeah, okay, I'm being smug and blue now, but there's more because there's stuff I can't see. Some of the stuff I rubbed out early on, like the bit of the chassis, the base, behind the wheels. If we could show that in some way, and we're going to use a different type of line, not a centre line. A centre line is long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash. So let's see the hidden stuff, or more importantly, let's call it hidden detail, because indeed that's what it is. It's detailing stuff that we cannot see. Um, let's, what we're we going to start off with. Um, Well, going across from one side of the vehicle to the other, we've got the hole in the cab. That also needs a centre line. There's a centre line I missed out, the one we can't see for the hole going through. Oh, and I missed a couple of centre lines on those uh, plan views as well. There's a hole in the chimney. I only know that from the top view because I can see another circle in the plan. But if I can see it in that view, or not see it, hidden detail, the same hole, doesn't go all the way through, is visible in the elevation and the end elevation. Now these dashed lines should join at the corners. There's the hole going through the cab, seen from the front, or not seen from the front. Um, and that probably needs a centre line as well. Oh, the, the top of the condenser, that wee dome bit, has to go in. Um, there must be some other hidden detail in there, I've not quite... What about, yeah, the holes, the little holes on the front of the cab. That's them going in the elevation. Now they're pointing forward, as if the driver was going to look out the front of those. And in the top view, they would actually join in a rather strange way of curved hole joining a curved hole. Just trust me with that curve that's appearing on the plan at the moment. And I'll have to get rid of some of those earlier lines if I can get my razor tool to work properly. Um, so some of, the, some of the hidden details are a little bit more complex. There are little cheats in this. The, the actual detail of how the chimney and the cylinder join would be slightly different from what I've shown you, just to do with curved surfaces, but that's to come in future drawings. So let's get those, uh, there we go, back on that plan view. There's the holes, the two sides of the hole, uh, the, front, uh, the one on the left and the one on the right. This is in the plan view, then the little arc that goes across. Um, should be really be centre lines through them, I suppose, as well, because those are holes going front to back. Sorry, from the back of the train towards the front of the train. Um, the axles, the where the 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 rod goes through the, the middle, I think we're going to need some hidden detail there. Um, in fact, looking at the elevation, those wheels, the axle, the rod that goes through the middle, come right to the edge 
right through it. So there's the centre lines and the plan view going in. So I've tidied up that top view a little bit. Um, looking now at the... Oh, how does the chimney and the condenser join onto the, the main body, the barrel? That needs to go in with some hidden detail. And in the end, uh, end elevation. Now, I think at this stage, our black drawing was looking fairly simple. We've added red, it's got a little bit more complicated. There's all these blue lines going in. It's getting a lot more complicated. So the idea of this is sometimes with computer drawings, for example, we can do this using layers and we can take these bits of information on and off depending on what we want to see. But for a very technical type of drawing, all this sort of detail needs to be added. Now I'm looking to see what I'm adding next and it's the, it's the axles in the plan view. It's those dashed lines going all the way through from one side to the other and through the wheel. Those axles, those little rods, go all the way through the wheel, there's a wee gap, then the body, the chassis, the bottom bit, and then a gap, and then the wheel at the other side. So it's, there's quite a lot of little hidden detail lines. That's the plan view getting finished off. I don't think you'll see them in the elevation, but the front view, the end elevation, there they go, that's the hidden detail of a cylinder, this axle, like a pencil or a piece of dowling, that goes through the wheel, over the gap, all the way through the body again, gap at the far side, and then through the wheel. And the only reason I know it goes all the way through is I can see a circle in the elevation where that cylinder, that rod comes out. Ah! Now talking of those wheels, the little blue lines going on now, and the elevation are the lines I rubbed out quite some time ago. That's the where the chassis, that boxy bit, would be in the elevation. Looking here, it's kind of busy. There's a lot on the go. Um, we've got the main outline, which we've constructed up using light lines to start off with. We've added centre lines. We've added hidden detail. I think that's enough. What do you think? It's kind of busy. It is confusing. So, at some point, we can decide whether we're going to show everything or we're just going to show a simple view. But technically, or, if you like, this is a very technical drawing. And that's one of the phrases you may come across. This is a hand-drawn, orthographic sketch, technical drawing sketch. You can produce these using computer aided drawing packages, and that's something you're going to be doing next term if you've not already looked at these uh, bits of software before. Let's get rid of all the clutter around about and see what we actually had at the beginning. There's the drawing without my verbiage around the outside of it. But if I just fade them out, I think you'll see that the original drawing, the black line that was there right at the start, centre lines have gone. You can see where the hidden detail sits now. Makes a little bit more sense. And then I'm fading that out as well. And that's, this is what we started off with, folks. But you see the journey it's taken us. Centre lines, cylinders, hidden detail. And this is an assembled model. It's made out of bits and you can see how all the bits fit together. There is always more than meets the eye. Looking at that model now, having gone through the process of center lines and hidden detail, you've got a clearer understanding than somebody looking at even the real thing on the outside. So centre lines, we've got a little bit to look at in some other uh, videos, maybe some 3D stuff. But for this now, have a go at something very similar. It's a small train. You can freeze frame, get screen captures of what I've drawn so far. And just have a go yourself. Just at the outline first of all, then think of centre lines, then think of adding hidden detail. Remember, that was my sketch. It wasn't the best. I have tidied it up. But for this stage... In S3, have a go at a small, if you have one at home, if you have a small toy from when you're younger or your brothers or sisters, have a go at one of those. It's a simple cylindrical sword of revolution, that chimney, that condenser, things that are spun round. I'm going to have a look at a little bit more detail at them later on.